Okay guys, I am going to preface this video with this little top, this little intro. I already filmed this whole video, which you can tell from the title, but this is a few days later and I have done more research and more looking into this whole foundation ordeal, the drama with the ingredients. And I was going to add this at the end of the video, but I thought it may get lost. People may exit out of the video when they see my, you know, final thoughts. And I really thought this was important and I wanted to start here. So, as mentioned, alcohol, denatured alcohol, is number three on the ingredient list. And I did watch Brianna's whole video, and I heard all she had to say. And then that other lady, Lisa, the comments on her video were all very just, you know, pretty much like, why would you use that? Why would you recommend it without reading the ingredients? And I think a lot of people on YouTube do not read ingredients. A lot of the bigger YouTubers don't read ingredients. I myself didn't even think to look for alcohol on, you know, an ingredient list of a high-end foundation. You know, is it shame on me? Maybe. So I started doing more research and looking into what other products have alcohol as an ingredient because I thought, you know, this can't be the first one. So I decided to look up primers that I thought were pretty popular. And I didn't see any that had alcohol that high on the content list. The MAC Strobe Cream did have it down further. I looked up some more foundations that are quite popular. The L'Oreal Pro Glow has the denatured alcohol as number three on its ingredient list. Chanel Vitamin Lair Vita Lumiere Aqua has it somewhere within the top five. The Perfection Lumiere has it around the top five. Armani Maestro Foundation, which is very popular, I think like sometime last year, it was everywhere on YouTube. It has it as number four, and it's even more expensive than the YSL All Hours. And I believe the Power Fabric also has it pretty high up. So they're right there. You know, those are more foundations that you hear people talk about all the time. People talk about the L'Oreal Pro Glow, I mean, constantly, and we haven't heard one mention of its alcohol content. The Armani Maestro, I've never heard anybody mention its alcohol content. Then I started looking into moisturizers to see because I know certain people have, I've heard people complain about the Clinique Moisture Surge Intense smelling like alcohol. And I did not actually find it on the alcohol list. Now I just Googled a few like pretty popular moisturizers, not to say it's not in any, but that's the ones I looked up and didn't see. Then I decided to look into toners. The Clinique Clarifying Lotion, I know number two and three both have denatured alcohol as their second ingredient, right behind water. So that's crazy high. The Peter Thomas Roth, Peter Thomas Roth Correction Pads have denatured alcohol up there. Seabreeze, no surprise, has it up there. So I'm like, you know, it's not just foundation, it is getting into skincare. The Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray has it either number two or number three, the NYX priming spray has alcohol up there. So, I mean, it's just, and I'm not defending the alcohol. I'm just, I guess it's kind of like all of a sudden the YSL All Hours is getting all this backlash. Like it's the first product in history to put alcohol really high up on the content list. And that's just not the case. So I guess I wanted to point that out because so many times on YouTube, people will hear one person say something and they just latch on and they just go crazy. Like the Garnier micellar water, you know, having a cancer causing ingredient. I haven't looked into that. I don't know what it has. I, it's not something I use all the time, but I'm pretty sure that ingredient is in other stuff we use, not just that. Like that, you know, for example, they're all about the Garnier micellar water causing them cancer and then they use antiperspirants with aluminum probably every day. So you just have to, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Don't think, oh, how dare YSL do that when other companies are doing the same things, you know? I don't know. I just felt like that was something really important to mention. Whether you choose to use the foundation or not is irrelevant, you know, as long as you are realizing other companies do the same thing. Also, I did look on... Um, you know, Paula, Paula's Choice, whatever her name is. She has a whole article, if I can remember to link, talking about alcohol in products. Because it's kind of like, I don't, uh, 
almost like a carrier. Some products use alcohol in order to help the other ingredients absorb better into the skin. And she goes on and on about, you know, how it is used in cosmetic type products. So if you want to look more about it, you know, feel free to read that article because this is probably as scientific as I'm ever going to get on my channel because it's just not, I, I'm not one of those beauty people that come here with like all the, you know, intelligent info to tell you that. I, you know, I'm just sharing what I love and what I have found to be effective for me. So, without further ado, I do hope you enjoy my first impression and review. I just wanted to put this info out there so you would, you know, have a little bit more to go on and not just take it as, oh, stay away from this only, you know. So, okay, talk to you guys later. Hey guys, okay, today I'm going to be doing a demo, first impression, and mini review of a new foundation. I have not tried a new foundation in so long. And I have seen all kinds of people talking about it on YouTube. So it is the YSL All Hours Foundation. I'm sure you've heard all about it. Can I say hey? Yeah, I have my little helper here. She wants to say hey. Hey. We've lost three teeth lately, so we have a pretty little snaggle tooth. Okay. So I was in Sephora returning something yesterday. And I decided, you know what? I'm just going to do an exchange and try it out. So this foundation retails for $58, probably the most expensive foundation I've ever tried, and it's only 0.84 ounces. So we're going to see if it's not love, it's going back. I did pick up the shade B20 Ivory. For reference, I'm about an NC20 in MAC foundation. The packaging is really pretty. Glass bottle, says up to 24 hour wear, flawless matte, full coverage, oil free, SPF 20. So we will see. I did go ahead and prime my face and use my It Cosmetics um, Bye Bye Redness per usual. And this is just the original shade. And I didn't want to depend on the foundation to cover my rosacea redness because that's just so much. And I'm going to use this every day regardless of what foundation I try. So I wanted to stick to it. But I did think I would apply part of my foundation with a sponge and the other side with a brush just for the sake of let's see okay so let's get started you look comfy and cozy I'll do two well one and a half pumps and see the lady matched me at Sephora yesterday and she said this looked to be a little light but I've also heard people say that it oxidizes I might have got a little too much so I figured it would be safer to go lighter and the next shade up B30 was really really dark and then the warm tones I'm just gonna use the sponge for my whole nose and then the warm tones were not right with me either so I'm hoping that it does darken a little because it does seem to be a little light but not too bad because we are going to be approaching the cooler months soon. So I'll probably get a little more pale. And I also can use bronzer and bronze myself up. It has a little bit of a scent. I don't know how to explain it. Almost like a slight melon. So far, I'm liking the finish. I actually, this morning, I was watching Brianna Stanko's videos. She had done saying basically why you needed to stay away from this foundation because it had alcohol as the third ingredient. Uh, I didn't watch all of the videos, so I'll have to go back and watch that and really give an idea on what I think. Based on the price of this foundation, I wouldn't use it every day anyway, so I don't know if that would be an issue or not. So, and then you can see my redness is covered, but I definitely have a bunch of little breakouts right now. I'm thinking it might have been that little Biobel primer mask that I used yesterday morning when I filmed my empties, because that's the only thing new I've done. And I definitely have quite a few little breakouts. I have not used a brush for foundation in a while because I've been using sponges. 
and I much, much, much prefer using a sponge. It's just, I don't know, it gives you such a better finish. If you are just happening upon this video and you're not a regular watcher, I have pretty much normal skin. I mean, sometimes I get a little oily, sometimes I'm a little dry. I'm definitely acne prone and I have some rosacea. So my skin is sensitive and I definitely want at least medium coverage. The Bye Bye Redness covers up most of the redness. I'm going to add a touch more because I think I added a little bit more with my sponge. The Bye Bye Redness covers up so much of the redness that I don't really depend on a foundation to be 100% full coverage for that. It looks like a pretty good match to me so after I blended it in I don't know maybe it did just get a little bit darker that fast okay so first impression I like it I definitely think I like it with a sponge more, but I'm also partial to a sponge for foundation application. If your skin isn't in great shape, a lot of times a sponge will sheer it out too much. But my skin, after using the Bye Bye Redness, the rest of it looks okay enough that I feel like I can get away with a sponge. Okay, so... Like that is a really nasty zit and I could use concealer but I don't I don't really use a lot of concealer on pimples and zits I just um, I don't know I don't get that crazy with it okay so I'm gonna go finish the rest of my face and then I'll be back and we'll just do a little chit chat for a second okay guys I went ahead and I did the rest of my makeup it is 10 12 for the record and after looking at my makeup in my bathroom lighting, I definitely like the side that I applied the makeup with a sponge more. The brush side doesn't look bad. It just isn't, it just doesn't look as nice. I definitely prefer the sponge. I would kind of describe the finish as almost like a soft matte. I liked it. I was able to apply my makeup to it nicely. I didn't get like patchy or streakiness or anything. So, so far, so good. I'm not going to say it's like $58 good so far. That's a little premature, but I do really like it. It gave me good coverage, but my skin looks like skin also. So that is really nice. And I did want to just mention my lip combo for the record. I'm wearing one of the Bare Minerals Gin Nudes in Smooch. And I applied my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Liner with it. They are on sale for the Ulta Days of Beauty for like, I think, $13.50. So I just wanted to show you this on camera in case you're curious about them. I may pick up another one in a different shade because I do like it. It's kind of like a soft matte. It doesn't dry like a lot of those liquid ones do to where you have like, you know, butthole lips. So anyways, that is how the makeup looks right now. I will check in with y'all a little bit later, probably this afternoon after we go out and about, run some errands and see and then I may do a final check-in in the evening so that's all for now okay guys I'm checking in again it is a 240 I have not done any blotting papers I haven't repowdered or anything like that and I think it is holding up pretty well I noticed that I'm looking a touch oily right there I'll I'm just gonna hold out and see how the rest of the day goes I do usually end up having to blot by now so it's holding on to it's kind of matte like i noticed in the car i looked at it and it has the look of a matte foundation so if you don't like anything even remotely matte stay away it's not like crazy matte but it definitely has that look i'm still partial to the side that i use the sponge on over the side with the brush my skin is not perfect right now if my skin was in a better condition, I think overall I might would like the foundation more. Even though it covers it well, it's still, I can see a few little breakouts peeking through, which that's fine by me, but it's all on the side that the brush, the sponge side, it just covered it more efficiently. So definitely use a sponge if you pick up this foundation. So far, I do really like it. 
Um, I just, if it was like a 20 to $30 foundation, I would say, heck yeah, pick it up. But it's not impressing me enough for the price. But I'm not saying I'm going to return it yet either. It's just, I'm kind of on the fence. I do think it looks really nice though. So if you have a gift card or, you know, you don't really care or you want just a nice high-end foundation, maybe look at it. I definitely think I need to think more about the whole ingredient list. Maybe watch some more reviews and see. We'll just have to see. Maybe YSL will say something about the alcohol content. But for now, that's my thoughts. I may check in again one more time later in the day. We're going to go to church this evening. So it's going to be on all day. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm sure I'll come back in and say something. So that's all for now. Hey guys, I decided to go ahead and do my last check-in. We are about to go to church. So before I go, I did want to do like a little bit of blotting, maybe just touch up a little bit of powder, but I wanted to give you a full, you know, thorough review. I didn't wear it for a full necessarily, like a full work day worth, but I did get a really good day's worth of wear out of it and I have to say for my specific skin especially considering the high humidity here it has really worn really well I did wear sunglasses for a little bit today and usually where my sunglasses hit right here I have a complete like it's just missing foundation and it looks terrible I have to look in a mirror every time you know I take off my sunglasses and I noticed after I took mine off both times today, there was just a tiny, tiny little mark there. So I have to say it was it's a little more withstanding that maybe because it's more matte. I would not say it's like full heavy matte. It's kind of like a soft satin, soft matte kind of look. So I do think it wears a little bit better. I haven't noticed a lot of breakthrough. This side, like I said before with the brush, I didn't love the final look of it. So overall, I think it is a really pretty looking foundation on your skin. The price, it's really hard for me to recommend it since I'm not just like head over heels in love with it. And then considering the whole ingredient issue, which after I did my last check-in, a lady I watch here, her name is Lisa, maybe Lisa J. She did a review on it today and I didn't watch it until I'd already worn mine for a good part of the day because I didn't want it to like skew my opinion. And all these people were commenting on her video saying, did you watch Brianna's video? Did you watch Brianna's video? And then a lady commented saying she's an esthetician and basically all foundations and skincare these days either have high contents of silicone or high contents of alcohol for something like the delivery system. I'm not saying everything has to have one or the other, but that's just kind of what I took from that comment. Now, I'm not like a skincare guru. I don't know. My skin does not tolerate high levels of silicones, and that is a problem with a bunch of the foundations I can't wear because of the high silicone amounts. So that may be something to look into that it's like you have to have one or the other. I'm not sure. That's just kind of what I took from the comment. Um, like I said before, this wouldn't necessarily be an everyday foundation for me for the price anyways. But I'm just unsure if it's worth the price. I think it's nice, like I said, if it was in the $20 to $30 range, maybe even pushing $40, I would, wouldn't have as much of a hmm, thought about it. So I don't know. I don't really do reviews where I'm just kind of like left without a real opinion. But this one is kind of that way. So my... The takeaway of this is go get a sample at Sephora if you can. Try it. See what you think. If you are unsure and you want to get it anyways, buy it from somewhere that you know you can return it easily. And, you know, that's really all I have to say. So, if you have tried this foundation, please let me know your thoughts. Maybe it will give me some more thoughts or something to think about. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed it, even though I don't have, like, a specific yes or, you know, a specific no. And um, just tell me what you think. So, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.